Well, in the past hour, the Queen has arrived at Dublin Castle, where she's hosting a banquet dinner as part of her historic visit of Ireland. She and Prince Philip greeted guests, and she's making her only public speech for the trip. Earlier, she visited a stadium where 14 people were killed by British forces 91 years ago. It would have been much easier for an Irish monarch to steer clear of Croke Park and its powerful history, but this queen did not shy away and that speaks volumes. Welcomed in by children sporting the jerseys of the 32 counties of this island, still under her jurisdiction. Via the player's entrance and onto that pitch, where every Irish person knows the forces of the Crown gunned down 14 civilians back in 1920. At the War Memorial in Ireland Bridge, the Queen paused to remember the Irish who fought the First World War. The Queen has been afforded little contact with the public for security reasons. But beneath the constant whir of helicopter blades, there was applause as she moved about the city. The Royal... It is just an hour's flying time from London to Dublin. In a coat of emerald green, Queen Elizabeth of Ireland was finally stepping onto the soil of Britain's nearest neighbour on a visit which it is hoped will signify the end to centuries of enmity and suspicion. The centre of Dublin had been locked down by Irish police. Outside the city, a pipe bomb had been found and defused overnight. In Phoenix Park stands the building which housed the British viceroys who ruled Ireland on the monarch's behalf. It was here that Mary McAleese, the Governor-General of a state which had once risen up against the British Crown, greeted the current wearer of that crown as an equal. In one part of the city centre, a group of about 100 Republicans were staging a protest against the visit. Police were there in force, a union flag was burned, and the Irish police made it clear that this was a day when protests were not being tolerated at all. They swept through everyone who stood in their way. But while committed Republicans feel aggrieved, it seems that the overwhelming majority of Irish people welcome the Queen's visit. This is, I think, it's great. Moving on, moving forward, as the fellow says. And it's great to see her here. I think it's fantastic. I do really. And I think it's 2011, not 1916, and it's trying to move on, really. But in order to move on, obstacles from the past need to be neutralised. And to do that, the Queen went to the Garden of Remembrance, to one of those who, prior to 1921, rose up against the British Crown to fight for Ireland's freedom. She laid a wreath and bowed her head in memory of the original Irish Republicans, the Fenian Brotherhood and the old IRA. This is a ceremony that would have been quite unimaginable for an Irish monarch to come here and lay a wreath. This, though, was a day when the past was confounded and when old hatreds were eased. From the Garden of Remembrance, she left again, along O'Connell Street and past the General Post Office, scene of the 1916 Easter Rising, through streets where spectators had been discouraged. Historic it may be, but the people of this city are really getting very little sense of this visit other than a rather distant view of a very heavily guarded convoy. Within the safety of Trinity College, things could be relaxed a little. The Queen was finally able to meet some of the citizens of Dublin. The final engagement on a day which has been so many years in coming.